Welcome to the second lecture of the course. Here I'll be presenting the main uh, non-destructive testing technique used in the industry. So we we'll start first by the penetrant testing. The principle of the penetrant testing is to apply a penetrant to uh, the specimen. So as you can see here, this is the specimen with a crack and we apply a penetrant on the surface. Of course the surface should be uh, cleaned before. The second step we have to wait for the liquid to be pulled into the defect by capillary action. You can see it here. And then uh, the excess of penetrant is uh, cleaned from the surface. So we remove the excess penetrant and then we apply a developer. The purpose of the developer is to pull out um, the triple penetrant back to the surface. So here is the developer and then the excess of penetrant is pulled out and we can see the indication. In this table you can see the advantages and limitations of uh, this technique. So it's uh, a low cost technique and portable technique and the indications uh, may be further examined. The limitation are uh, that the defect must be opened to the surface, otherwise we cannot, uh, we cannot see it if it is not opened to the surface. And then the part of the specimen uh, must be cleaned before and after the test. And if there is a surface film such as coating, uh, it may uh, mask the defect. Let's see another technique, which is the magnetic particle testing. The first magnetic uh, field is established in the component, and the component, of course, should be made from ferromagnetic material. So the, the arrows here represent the magnetic field, and the magnetic lines uh, the magnetic lines of force uh, travel through the material and uh, exit and re-enter uh, from the poles. The defect cannot uh, support uh, the flux and it forces some uh, of the flux outside of the part, as you can see here. The magnetic particles distributed over the component will be attracted to areas with flux of leakage and produce a visible indication. And here uh, also uh, the advantage of this technique are that it is low cost and portable technique and it gives indication of, of uh, subsurface defects. The limitation uh, that uh, uh, the specimen should be made of ferromagnetic uh, materials. Uh, the alignment of magnetic field is uh, very critical and the magnetization required after the test and also the surface coating can mask defects and also we need uh, to clean uh, the specimen before and after the test. Now let's see uh, the ultrasonic testing technique. The main principle of this technique is to um, generate uh, a high frequency sound wave inside the material. So as you can see here, we have a specimen with a flow and this transducer generates sound waves of high frequency. The sound waves uh, travel through the material and are received by the same transducer or uh, sometimes we use uh, a transmitter and a, a receiver. So uh, the waves can be uh, received by another uh, transducer. And the amount of energy transmitted or received and the time uh, required by the, the wave to, to travel through the material is uh, calculated and analyzed by the ultrasonic system. Changes in material thickness and changes in material properties can also be measured by this technique. 
here are the main advantage and limitation of the ultrasonic testing method so it is most sensitive to cracks and it gives immediate results and its automation is possible and uh, it it gives also a permanent record of uh, the defect and it's also a portable technique the limitation um, a couplant is required and complex uh, geometry or small parts may be difficult to check and reference uh, standard and block are required and also it needs a uh, trained operators and special props. Now let's see another technique which is AD current testing. Alternating electrical current is passed through a coil producing a magnetic field as you can see on the picture. When the coil uh, is placed near the conductive material the change in magnetic field induces current flow in the material, as you can see here. This current, of course, travel uh, in closed loops and are uh, called eddy currents. So here, uh, as you can see, the eddy currents are uh, represented by uh, the green arrows. Eddy currents produce their own magnetic field that can be measured and used to find flows and characterize uh, conductivity and permeability and dimensional uh, features. The advantage of the eddy current technique uh, uh, it's a high speed technique and low cost and also it gives permanent record and no coupling, no probe is required. The limitation, um, well, it, it, it should be used only on conductive uh, material and shallow depth of penetration. Now let's see another technique which is the radiography testing. Uh, first, X-rays are used to produce image of um, object using film or other detector that is sensitive to radiation. So as you can see here, the source of radiation, uh, radiation that generates um, the X-ray uh, which are used to produce image. The test object is placed between the radiation source and the detector or the film. Here is the test object which is uh, placed between uh, the radiation source and the detector. The thickness uh, and the density of material that X-rays must penetrate affect the amount of radiation reaching the detector. So we have uh, the degenerated radiation which comes from the source of radiation and we have a small amount received by the detector. This variation in radiation produces uh, an image on the detector that often shows uh, internal uh, features of the test object. Here are the advantage and limitation of this technique. So it is uh, portable and it gives also permanent records and geometry variation does not affect the direction of radiation. But uh, in the other side there is uh, a radiation hazard and it is expensive and it, it requires uh, trained operators and uh, some linear defect may be missed and the depth of uh, the defect is not indicated and access is needed to uh, at least uh, two sides of uh, the part or the specimen.